Okay, I call this when math and magic become indistinguishable. Okay, so as you can see here, I have all of the face cards set out as companion pairs. So the same value and the same color, okay? Now, if you were here as the spectator, you could tell me how to gather these up. It really is a free choice, okay? So we'll maybe gather them like this, okay? And then what I'm going to do, um, since we saw the cards, why don't we go ahead and just uh, mix them with a left-right shuffle. How would you like these stacked? Right on left? Okay, very good. Um, from here, I can give them a Charlier shuffle. Um, also, I could have you as the spectator just cut it wherever you would like, okay? And that's kind of important to do because where you cut the cards will determine the new top card. Okay, because I'm going to take that new top card and set it out. That's what I'm going to do. And then from here, I'm going to Klondike shuffle cards to the table until only one card remains in my hand. Okay, and I'm going to set it right there. Okay, I'll pick these up. Now at this point, we can uh, deal them out into a left and right pile as many times as you like. This is truly the case. With random stacking decided by you, so maybe you want right on left, okay? Or you could have the spectator do this. Just have them deal into two piles, stack them how they may, okay? And they can do one of these or 70 of these, okay? It won't hurt anything. Okay, maybe they want right on left this time. That would be just fine. Okay, so once they're satisfied that the cards are sufficiently mixed, all you need to do as a performer is to perform an mange over under or an under over. Either one works just fine. Okay, now at this point, uh, you can perform a Charlier shuffle as before or have the spectator randomly cut the cards. That's important because the new top card is being decided by them. I'll put it right there. And then from here, we just repeat those same actions, amazingly. Uh, I'll Klondike until only one card remains. Set it there. So what I thought we would do is reveal these kind of one at a time, but from the previous step. So let's see if we were successful last time. Oh, we were indeed. We found the companion card. Okay, well, let's move ahead. Um, you can now deal out the cards into two piles with random stacking decided by you as many times as you like as the spectator. Okay, so you can even hand them the cards and say, okay, deal them out, stack them however you like, deal them out as many times as you like. Okay, maybe they want right on left this time. Then they hand them to you as the performer. All you need to do is perform a manche shuffle. From here, if you would like, you can perform a Charlier shuffle. So I can have a link in the description below. But perhaps more importantly, have the spectator freely cut the cards and complete the cut wherever they like. And then set that card down. Okay, and that was decided by them. Now you Klondike shuffle the cards as before. It really is the same three or four steps over and over. So we'll put this one here. And then we are going to reveal the previous. Oh, we got the previous one. <laughs> okay. And now the spectator at this point, oh, looks like we're going downhill. <laughs> um, they can uh, deal out into two piles as many times as they like. Right on left, left on right. And maybe they want right on left again. Maybe they say, okay, I'm, I'm satisfied that the cards are mixed. They hand them to you as the performer. You go ahead and just perform a mon shuffle. If you would like as the performer, you can perform a Charlier, but most importantly, have the spectator cut the cards wherever they would like. The new top card is set down right there. And then, as always, you just Klondike until only one card remains, right? One card. Well, let's see how we did last time. Oh, we nailed the last one as well. Okay, well, can you anticipate what the steps are? Yes. The spectator is free to stack these however they like, deal them out into two piles with random stacking decided by them. OK, 
okay? And so once they're satisfied, the cards are beyond the knowledge of really anyone. Have them hand them to you. You perform a Mon Shuffle. You can that, then perform a Charlier if you'd like as the performer. And then hand the cards to the spectator to freely cut the cards wherever they would like. That brings a new top card to the top. <laughs> so set it down there. And then we shardly a shuffle until only one card remains. Okay. And so let's see how we did last time. Oh, we nailed it last time. Now you have to realize we're only we're down to just two cards here. Okay. How did we do? Oh, we got the red jacks. Well, I think that means that we must have gotten these to match as well, and we did. Okay, well, that's an example of when math and magic become indistinguishable, okay? Because it's mathematics driving this, but boy, does it border on pure magic to watch it happen with all of the free choices given to the spectator. So think about it. They're randomly cutting the cards at a certain location. So they are deciding these cards. They truly are. Those were decided. Those are a consequence of the spectator's choice, not yours. And then they're able to also deal into a left right pile with random stacking as many times as they like. <laughs> That's crazy. And then when they're satisfied, they hand them to you and then you just perform a mange and so forth. Okay. So this is an amazing result and an example of how good mathematics can lead to amazing card magic. Okay. And now for those who want to stick around and kind of see exactly what's going on with this, Okay, so you, you, if, if you're satisfied that you think you can do this without further explanation, that would be just fine. Uh, but I did think I would quickly show you kind of a diagram of what's going on here. Okay, so I have our, our three structures, an AMP, it's like having a 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, or in the case of these cards, it's like having companion cards of the same suit. Red King, Red King, that's like a one, one. Uh, black King, Black King, two, two, and so forth, okay? Um, so that's called an AMP, stands for Adjacent Mirror Pairs, okay? Now, so we started here. So let, well, let, let's do everything face up, just so you can kind of see what's going on. Okay, so starting here, and then I did a left, right, like this. Well, what that's going to do is it's going to create a two cycle, right? You see there's a pattern here, the same pattern here. Randomly stack these. It's called a two cycle. So it's like having one, two, three, and then one, two, three, repeat it, right? There's a pattern that repeats twice. Okay, so that is the two cycle. So we have black jack, black jack, red queen, red queen, black queen, black queen, and so forth, okay? Now, this kind of structure will not be harmed by a Charlier shuffle, okay? Charlier shuffle is where you do this bottom to top, top to bottom, bottom to top. It will still be, quote, a two cycle. It'll still be of this kind. Um, and now a Charlier shuffle is really just equivalent to cutting the cards at some location. So you have the spectator do that. You set aside the next card, right? So here's the king. Now, what did we do from here? We did a Klondike shuffle. Do you remember that? We did a Klondike shuffle. What does that do? Well, it brings to the top the companion to that one. That's what it does. But that Klondike shuffle, in the process of doing that, it's taken a two-cycle structure and converted it to a mirrored structure. So what's a mirrored structure? It's like having one, two, three, three, two, one, right? So here, um, it's mirrored because you have a red king on the outside of the packet here, top and bottom. Go in one, you have a red jack, then a red jack from the bottom, black jack, and then a black jack, third from the bottom, and so forth, all the way to the two red queens. So this is mirrored. Because of that, the stay stack principle is in force. It's a mathematical principle, which allows you to Deal out the cards into two piles with random stacking as many times as you like. And it won't change the fact that this is a mere packet. Now the cards are moving around as you can see. But as you can see right here, 
Now we have a red jack at the top, red jack at the bottom. Black queen, second from the top, black queen, second from the bottom. And then the two middle cards now are the red kings. Okay, so this is still, quote, mirrored. And so what I've shown here is that the uh, left-right shuffle leaves that structure alone. I guess I should rewind here for a second. The Charlier shuffle that we did for this packet leaves it alone. Okay, so it doesn't change those. But to get it back from here to here, which is where we need it, for the beginning of all of this, you do a mon shuffle, like over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. And so it's back to this kind of structure, which is what we, we kind of started with after we did our first left-right shuffle at the very beginning. Okay, so this is the structure we want when we have the spectator randomly cut it, right? And then we set aside the new top card, okay? So we have it now. You can kind of see the structure here. Uh, black queen, black queen, black jack, black jack, red king, red king, and so forth, okay? So this can be, once again, surely shuffled. It won't hurt it. Or more importantly, just have the spectator randomly cut the cards at any location. That brings a new top card to the top. Set that down. And then just Klondike shuffle until only one card remains. And it's guaranteed to be the companion card to that one. And then you just repeat. This is mirrored again. So you can have the spectator do as many left-right shuffles as they like with random stacking. When they're done, you do a Mon shuffle. Then you can do a Charlier and then they can cut it. That brings a new top card and then do a Klondike, and that brings a new companion card, and so forth. So it's just kind of this loop. We start here, but once we leave here and land there, you're just kind of looping around in this diagram here, and you're guaranteed to match up all of the companion pairs. Okay, so anyway, that's uh, insight into the mathematics itself. So anyway, so thank you for watching, and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.